So yesterday, all day, at St. Anselm College, they had what is known as Youth Fest. And so young folks from all over the state uh, spend the day at St. Anselm. And uh, I'm happy to announce that we had 27 young people present at St. Anselm yesterday. And they had a marvelous time. Isn't that good? So, uh, you know, they, they had Mass, they had Confession, they had Eucharistic Adoration. Now, our men, uh, we're having our men's retreat Friday and Saturday uh, at the Sisters of the Holy Cross in Pittsfield. And right now we have 22. And I have a competition with Gertrude Hammond. She got 27. I want to get 28 guys. So, it's not too late. Uh, you can let me know after Mass if you're interested in going. We'd love to have you. We're going to be having a retreat on uh, the mercy of God, divine, divine mercy. Back in the 1800s, uh, there was a young Brit, uh, an Englishman, and his father was a sea captain. And uh, because of that, he... You know, he, he didn't grow up in poverty. He had a pretty good, pretty good life. And uh, he, too, wanted one day to be a captain of a ship, like his dad. And he went sailing with his dad uh, to learn the skill of captaining a ship. But he, uh, he was hard to teach. He had very little discipline. He was a real problem. And uh, they parted. He joined the British Navy and deserted. He was captured. He was uh, court-martialed. He was publicly flogged. Uh, all kinds of trouble. And uh, he just uh, gave up on life and, and said, I'm just out for myself. And he went to Africa to get involved in the slave trade. He knew we could make a lot of money selling black slaves on the market, and that was his plan. Even that backfired. He ended up working with the slaves. He escaped on a ship called the Greyhound, and they're out at sea, and this young man ridicules any kind of faith, uh, makes fun of Thomas the Kempis' famous book, the imitation of Christ. He just laughs at it, uh, ridicules God, and uh, not a very attractive person at all. You might even say he was wretched. Well, the greyhound gets involved in a terrible storm and is about to sink. The only thing keeping the ship afloat is the cargo, the buoyancy of the cargo below. They're pumping, they're pumping water for nine hours, and, and finally, uh, one of the deck hands shouts, but we're goners, we're going down. And at that moment, this young man turns to Christ. And these are his words. Lord, have mercy on us. Finally, when he, when he, hit, when he hit bottom, he finally turned to God and asked for mercy. You know who I'm talking about? You've sung the song Amazing Grace. Look at the credit. John Newton. John Newton, uh, the ship didn't go down. And for the rest of his life, he would fast and pray on the anniversary of his salvation on the anniversary of God's mercy to him. And eventually he became an Anglican priest in England. And he wrote the song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Have you ever felt like you were a wretch? Uh, you remember back in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s when we were, uh, I guess, trying to be politically correct? And how can we... How can we say that we're wretched? How can we use that? And they, they, they changed the words with a hymn. Remember that? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved and set me free. 
Doesn't that make you feel good? That's not what he wrote. He, 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 he felt like a wretch. He knew. He really, he was. He was wretched. That same a wretch like me. We finally going back to the original word. Uh, but I, I think if you grasp that understanding that I'm confessing now, I do pray, but I pray the hardest when I'm in trouble. Is there anybody else like me? Yeah. Get, 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 what's the difference between praying in church and praying in a casino? When you're in a casino, you really mean it. <laughs> yeah, well, look, but when, I, when you're really hurting, when you're in trouble, isn't that when you turn to God and say, Lord, help me, have mercy on me, just like John knew? And, and that's usually the story of most people. So don't apologize. Don't apologize. Thomas, the doubting Thomas, uh, when Christ said, touch my wound, Thomas was at his lowest point. Mary, Mary Magdalene thought that Jesus was dead and, and was crying. She was weeping at her lowest point. And he just says, Mary. And he recognized his voice. Wouldn't you love to have Christ call your name like that? Mary. And our, our, our disciples on the road to Emmaus, Easter Sunday afternoon, they had given up all hope. We had hoped he would be the one to set Israel free. They were uh, downcast, walking like this, looking at the ground, depressed. Have you ever felt like that? Hopeless. Hopeless. Over. He's dead. They, that's how they felt. They were at their lowest, lowest point. And what does it mean? John's gospel is so powerful. They were walking away from Jerusalem. They were walking away from the disciples and the apostles and the early Christians. They were going off by themselves. They were leaving the faith. That's what he means by they were walking away from Jerusalem. You know, the mass that we have here, the structure of the mass, and I believe it's a masterpiece, is based on this Emmaus gospel. What do we do at first? We gather, and Christ gathers with us. Notice he came and began to walk with them. The risen Christ gathers us together. We gather with him. We come together. It's so important. We come together as his brothers and sisters, as his body here on earth. And then after we gather... What did he do? He began to interpret the scriptures to them. Wouldn't you love to know what the risen Christ said about the scriptures? Oh my goodness. What did he say? Well, that's the next part of the Mass. We just have the lectures proclaim the scriptures. I read the gospel. I'm supposed to try to apply it to 2014. But it is the risen Christ speaking to us. The word of the Lord. He's speaking to us every time we gather. And so the second part is the Scripture. But here's what's so important, and I think what we can all learn, that two disciples, well, they, their hearts were moved. Their hearts were moved. They were burning within them. The, uh, Flannery O'Connor, uh, a, a great novelist from the South, uh, but uh, she, in one of her books, uh, she was talking about a, a Catholic church and uh, why people came, why you were here. And, and in the book she said, you know, she said, <laughs> the, the, the sermons are so bad, there's got to be some reason why they still come here. <laughs> and the reason is that the risen Christ is here. He's here. That's, so, that's why we're here. We're here because the risen Christ is here. And their hearts were burning. And here's what they did. They invited him to stay in their lives. Stay with us, Lord. Stay with us. The day's almost over. Have dinner with us. Stay the night. They invited the risen Christ into their lives. That's what we got to do, folks. That's what we got to do. He doesn't push himself. He doesn't force himself upon us. But he waits for us. Please come in. Please join me. Please enter my life. 
Stay with us, Lord. Better yet, can we stay with you? Can we stay with you? So he, they invite him, and he comes to the table, and it's his supper. It's not our supper. It's the Lord's supper. And he fed them with the Eucharist. And that's when they recognized him. They recognized that he was there. He was risen. And hopefully we too recognize him. He's here for us. And he's feeding us. And the Eucharist is the risen body and blood of Christ. So they gather. He interprets the scriptures. They invite him to stay. He has the Eucharist. And then he sends them back to Jerusalem. Back to the faith. Back to proclaim, we have seen the Lord. He is risen. To go out and spread the good news. That's what we're called to do, folks. Gather, listen to the Scriptures, have our hearts burn, invite Him into our lives, let Him feed us, and then send us out to proclaim the good news. That's why Easter is just so marvelous. It's just light. It's absolute light. It's the life of Christ, raised up by His Father, but it's our lives raised up with Him and in Him. You know, Pope Francis uh, was telling the priest not to preach too long. Did you know that? So, okay, Francis, I'll, I'll stop. Stop. He doesn't preach that long. He doesn't. 